on World News Tonight. A new threat, new pandemic causing virus in West Africa causes fears to rise. Sicilian blazes, Mediterranean heat waves causes fires to spread in Italy. Terrorist victory, Taliban takes control of more than 70% of Afghanistan as Afghan forces weaken. Robot helpers, AI helpers assist in caring for Indonesians in COVID isolation. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Good evening and thank you for joining with us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage with a look into the new Marburg virus spreading in Western Africa. A new virus has been discovered in Western Africa believed to cause hemorrhagic fever to the to the effect the WHO warned nations that this new virus has the potential to cause a new pandemic. Health authorities in Guinea are monitoring 155 people who may have been in contact with a confirmed case of Marburg virus, a highly infectious hemorrhagic fever that's similar to Ebola. The World Health Organization says that it's believed to be the first case in West Africa, and it comes just two months after Guinea was declared free of Ebola. The region was the origin of the 2014 to 16 West Africa Ebola outbreak, which was the deadliest in history. It also saw a brief resurgence of Ebola this year. The WHO said Marburg had been circulating in animals, particularly bats, in southern Guinea and neighboring Sierra Leone and Liberia. Pathogens have tended to cross from animals to humans in the region because of their close interaction, notably in the hunting and eating of bushmeat from the wild. Marburg and Ebola are closely related, and transmission between humans is usually through contact with blood or other bodily fluids. Marburg fatality rates in past outbreaks have varied from 24 to 88 percent of those infected. But Georges Kizerbo, the country's WHO head, said they were much better prepared to handle an outbreak. He added that the discovery of the Marburg case also indicated improved ability to detect such infections. Now in the U.S., President Biden slammed the politicization of mask wearing for children in schools, saying it's about keeping children safe as Republican governors in Florida and Texas clash with local officials who are resisting their orders banning mask mandate. I know there are a lot of people out there trying to turn a public safety measure, <clears throat> that is, children wearing masks in school so they can be safe into a political dispute and that this isn't about politics. This is about keeping our children safe. U.S. President Joe Biden on Thursday weighed in on the growing battle over masking students as the start of the academic year coincides with a new wave of COVID-19 cases. With all students under 12 not yet eligible for the vaccine, many schools want to keep students masked to slow the spread of the highly transmissible Delta variant. But it's a divisive issue in places like Tennessee, where this week over 100 anti-mask protesters heckled some doctors and nurses after a school board voted to require masks for elementary students. And several protesters threatened a man who was trying to leave in his car, yelling, We know who you are. You can leave freely, but we will find you. We know who you are. You can leave freely, but we will find you. I saw a video and reports from a Tennessee uh, of protesters threatening doctors and nurses. You know, our health care workers are heroes. They were the heroes when there was no vaccine. Biden also praised local officials in states like Florida and Texas who are fighting for mask mandates despite the orders from Republican governors. To the mayors school superintendents, educators, local leaders who are standing up to the governor's politicizing mass protection for our kids. Thank you. Thank you as well. Thank God that we have heroes like you. And I stand with you all. And America should as well. The number of daily cases across the country has doubled in the last two weeks, reaching a six-month peak. 
CDC Director Rochelle Walensky on Thursday said masks are key to controlling the spread. So best way to keep our schools safe and we know how to do it is to um, vaccinate everyone who can be vaccinated, vaccinate family members of children cannot yet be vaccinated, and then to follow the, uh, the mitigation strategies in our school um, guidance, including masking in schools. The Board of Houston's public schools was expected to add its voice to the debate on Thursday and vote to defy a state ban from Republican Governor Greg Abbott on mask mandates. The Houston Chronicle reported that a majority of board members have expressed support for masking up. Over in Europe, three new conditions reported by a small number of people after vaccination with COVID-19 shots from Pfizer and Moderna are being studied to assess if there may be possible side effects. For more on this, we have other than a World News Special Correspondent Prashani Rodrigo who joins us now from Helsinki in Finland. Prashani. Well, Shanali, shares in Moderna and Pfizer sank on Wednesday after the European drug regulator said it was looking into possible new side effects of companies' COVID-19 vaccines. That includes kidney inflammation, an allergic skin reaction and a renal disorder with heavy protein loss in urine. Pfizer is by far the biggest supplier of COVID-19 vaccines to the European Union, issuing just over 330 million doses in the region compared to some 43 million from Moderna. Both companies did not immediately respond to Reuters' request for comment. It says the latest assessment is a part of routine updates to the safety section of the authorized vaccines database. It also looking into menstrual disorders as possible side effects of vaccines, including those from AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson. However, the European regulator and the World Health Organization have stressed that the benefits from the vaccines outweigh any risks. The watchdog did not give details on Wednesday on how many cases of the new side effects were recorded, but said it's requested more data from both companies. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Prashani Rodrigo reporting from Helsinki in Finland. We have some good news for you. The WHO warns the world could see over 300 million cumulated COVID-19 cases by early 2022 since the virus is spreading so rapidly. To try to counter the explosive increase, the agency says it will mass test three potential drugs aimed at treating COVID-19 patients. While the international community grapples with the rampant spread of COVID-19, the WHO says it plans to study three potential treatments for patients who have the virus. Today, we are pleased to announce the next phase in the Solidarity trial called Solidarity Plus. Solidarity Plus will test three drugs, artesanate, a treatment for severe malaria, imatinib, a drug for certain cancers, and infliximab, a treatment for immune system disorders such as Crohn's disease. He explained the trials are being conducted across 52 countries. The head of the WHO also warned that with the current speed at which the virus is spreading, cumulated global cases could top 300 million by early next year. Forecasting the grim outlook, he said how fast it happens depends on everyone's efforts to contain the virus. Against this backdrop, data released by Worldometer Wednesday showed new global daily cases from late July have hovered around the 700,000 range. While this is lower than the 900,000 logged in mid-April, it's much higher than the 200,000 seen in late June. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back. Italian firefighters continue to battle blazes in Sicily as temperatures reach what may possibly be a record high in Europe. The region's Agriculture and Meteorological Information Service reported that the temperature rose to 48.8 degrees Celsius. Twenty-nine degrees Celsius as dawn breaks in Syracuse on Thursday. The city witnessed the highest temperature ever recorded in Europe a day earlier when it touched 48.8. This isn't the only corner of Italy hit by the ongoing heat wave. Tourists in the Italian capital are doing whatever they can to keep cool. 
A giant heat dome currently over southern Europe has resulted in temperatures soaring. According to experts, hot summers like this one are likely to become a regular affair. The heat wave in Europe hit Greece last week before moving west. The temperatures have resulted in wildfires breaking out in Sicily and Calabria. Forecasters predict temperatures are set to peak in southern Italy on Friday. Now taking a look at the situation in Afghanistan, the Taliban advances on their battle against the Afghan government in an attempt to gain control over the country. The Taliban sees Herat, Afghanistan's third largest city, as well as the district capital of uh, Ghazni, just 130 kilometers from Kabul. As the fighting intensifies, tens of thousands of Afghans have fled, seeking refuge in Kabul. Over the past week, the Taliban have seized three-quarters of the country's northern provinces. Many of the refugees in the capital are from Herat, Afghanistan's third largest city, which is now in the hands of the Taliban. The Taliban offensive that started in May is advancing at a breakneck pace. On Thursday, they captured three more provincial capitals, Herat, Kandahar and Ghazni. The militants now control a third of Afghanistan's regional cities. The week-long blitz is putting pressure on the embattled Afghan government. President Ashraf Ghani flew to the besieged northern city of Mazar-e-Sharif on Wednesday to discuss strategy with local leaders. The capture of Ghazni is particularly alarming. It's just 150 kilometers from Kabul and with it in the hands of the militants, a crucial highway linking the Afghan capital with the southern provinces has been cut off. There are reports the Taliban are freeing prisoners in Kandahar and the southern city of Lakshargah. Meanwhile, ongoing peace talks in Doha remain stalled, despite the offer of a power-sharing deal from the government in return for an end to the fighting. Moving on to Europe, the future of Poland's three-party coalition government has been thrown into doubt as Parliament voted for a controversial media ownership bill that could lead to the country's largest remaining independent TV station losing its license. Polish lawmakers have passed a bill that may mean the end of a major TV channel critical of the government. The government says the bill's needed to stop countries like Russia and China from taking control of Polish media. But opponents see it as a way to push U.S. media giant Discovery from selling TVN24, the most watched independent channel in Poland, and say the bill is an attack on media freedoms. Earlier this week, thousands of Poles took to the streets in protest of the proposed changes. They gathered outside parliament and in cities across the country. Discovery's ownership is also one of the largest investments by the U.S. and Poland. However, the new bill would change the rules for foreign ownership of broadcasters and could put a stop to Discovery's control of TVN. It also comes just before the channel's license is set to expire next month. Its passage drew swift condemnation from Washington, one of Warsaw's most important allies. One opposition lawmaker says future U.S. investments in the country could be at stake. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said Washington was deeply troubled by the bill and said it may undermine what he called Poland's strong investment climate. But a spokesman for Poland's government dismissed criticisms, saying the government had the right to regulate questions about capital. The U.S. has test launched an advanced intercontinental ballistic missile, which such sessions are regularly carried out. Some believe this could be a message to North Korea as the regime condemned the Seoul Washington joint drills and raised tensions on the peninsula. U.S. Air Force Global Strike Command says it launched on Wednesday an unarmed Minuteman 3 intercontinental ballistic missile from Vandenberg Space Force based in California. The missile, equipped with a test re-entry vehicle, hit the surface of the water well over 6,000 kilometers downrange near Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands. The U.S. Air Force said the tests verify the accuracy and reliability of the ICBM weapon system and ensures America's ability to maintain a strong, credible nuclear deterrent and to guarantee the security of its allies. 
The launch required a month of preparation, and the U.S. says it was not a response or reaction to world events or regional tensions. But the prompt announcement is getting attention, with tensions rising on the Korean Peninsula as North Korea protests Seoul and Washington's summertime military drills. Slamming the Allies' joint exercises, Kim Yo-jong, the sister of the North Korean leader, insisted in her recent statement that the U.S. continues to increase its military threats against the regime and said North Korea will reinforce its defenses and preemptive strike capabilities. The test launch by the U.S. could possibly send a message to the regime, which has been insinuating the possibility of armed protest. Over in Germany, German police have arrested a British man who worked at the British Embassy in the Berlin in suspicion of passing documents to the Russian intelligence service in exchange for cash. For more on this, we have at the Berlin World News Special Correspondent Inuka Ponzer reporting from Cleve in Germany. Inuka. Well, Shanali, German prosecutors said that the apartment and workplace of the man, identified only as David S., had been searched and he would be brought before an investigating judge. On at least one occasion, he passed on documents he had obtained in the course of his professional activities to a representative of a Russian intelligence service. The accused received cash in an as yet unknown amount in return for his transmission of information. The man was arrested on Tuesday in Potsdam, just outside Berlin. He was employed as a local staff member at the embassy until his arrest, which was the result of a joint investigation by German and British authorities. British police said in a statement that the man was arrested on suspicion of committing offences related to being engaged in intelligence agent activity. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adhudar World News Special Correspondent Inuka Ponzo reporting from Cleve in Germany. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. An international meeting on the peace process in Afghanistan started in Doha, Qatar with delegates from China, the United States, Russia and Pakistan attending the meeting. Delegates from the four countries appealed for a peaceful solution to end the violence. In the latest instance of natural disasters in India, the Himachal region in northern India experienced a landslide with casualties already being reported. China issued a white paper to elaborate on how its realization of all-round moderate prosperity represents comprehensive process in ensuring universal human rights in China and a new contribution to the world's human rights cause. Six people, including a child, were killed in a mass shooting in the city of Plymouth in southwest England in an incident described by the British Home Secretary as shocking. At least 21 people have died and four missing in China's flood-stricken central Hubei province. TikTok was the world's most downloaded app last year, overtaking Facebook and its messaging platforms. The Chinese-owned video app surged in popularity despite efforts by former President Donald Trump to ban it. It is believed to have 1 billion users worldwide, including more than 100 million in the United States. A wild world of short video content filled with amateur dancers and funny animals, but also the French National Police and international soccer stars. They're all on TikTok, which in 2020 became the world's most downloaded app in front of even Instagram and Facebook, the new social network notoriously addictive for its devoted users. Created just four years ago by Chinese web studio ByteDance, TikTok's meteoric rise has been driven by youth. The percentage of French 16 to 25 year olds using it went from 10% to 38% in the past year alone. That success has rattled US authorities, who fear the app could be used by Beijing for espionage due to massive data collection crucial to the algorithm that keeps users watching. Even French President Emmanuel Macron uses it to try to reach French youth. It's also becoming a new advertising powerhouse. This collective of popular French TikTok stars has collaborated with brands like Givenchy and Adidas. TikTok now become a cash machine for its top content producers, who can earn tens of thousands of euros for a single sponsored post. 
And finally tonight, designed with the help of a group of Indonesian university lecturers to entertain a village, a homemade robot has found a new use during the pandemic, bringing food and hopefully a smile to self-isolated residents who have contracted COVID-19. Assembled from electric household items like pots, pans and an old television monitor, the robot was renamed the Delta Robot by the project team after the highly contagious variant of the coronavirus that has ripped through. Indonesia. With the robot's head made from a rice cooker, it is operated by remote control and its battery should allow for 12 hours of operation. It has also been modified to spray disinfectant to stop the spread of the virus. After trundling down the street to the home of an isolated resident, the robot speaker emits the message, peace be with you, followed by a delivery is here or get well soon. The village where the robot operates is in Surabaya, which is the capital of the East Java province and Indonesia's second biggest city. Surabaya has been swept up by a devastating second wave of the coronavirus infections in the past month. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again on Monday with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Until then, stay safe and have a great weekend.